Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories. In the last episode, we started off Riku's story, and in this episode, we're going to get to pick our first world, and Neverland is going to be the world I choose, not for any particular reason, other than I don't really like to fight Captain Hook, and I'd rather get him out of the way as early as possible, but I hope you guys are ready for this doozy of an introductory cutscene in Neverland. That's right guys, we don't even get a cutscene, all we do is get the key of beginnings thrown at us, and the level starts. So I'm not really sure why they decided to not give us a cutscene at the beginning of each level, but my theory is, and by the way, I'm just gonna run straight to the boss room so you can see how easy Riku's storyline is, but my theory, basically, is that Riku doesn't remember these places like Sora remembers them, so he doesn't have the same memories available to create the cutscenes that we've seen in Sora's storyline, if that makes sense. The only flaw with that theory, really, is that Riku was, in fact, in Neverland in the first game. So you would think it would be some sort of a little bit of a cutscene, at least, but I guess not. As you can see, though, we're already at the first boss fight. I'm not sure if there's going to be any introductory words here, but I don't think there will be. Yeah, I kind of figured there wouldn't be any words spoken between the two characters here, but I figured since I've let the boss introduction play without me talking over for the entire Let's Play so far, I would just keep the tradition similar here. But one thing I want to point out about Riku's storyline that I haven't pointed out already, I don't think, is that you don't get any cure cards at all. And that might seem kind of unfair, because healing was a big part of the gameplay in Sora's storyline, but you might notice that we have a new friend card, and that is King Mickey. And by the way, Dark Break, I think I might have said that Dark Riku wasn't as strong as I wanted him to be in the last episode. I take that back. He's really strong. His Dark Break attack and the Dark Byraga, which I just happened to put together here, are really strong. But the King Mickey enemy card, not enemy card, friend card, heals you, reloads your deck, and usually stuns enemies. So if that's not, I'm not going to say it's overpowered or anything like that, but it is a very, very powerful friend card. And if you get any King Mickey cards and you ever get low on health, that is definitely what you want to use because you don't just get health back from it. You get a whole lot of other benefits as well. But I really doubt there's going to be any sort of dialogue at the end of the Captain Hook fight since there wasn't any at the beginning. But one thing you can be fairly certain of, even in Riku's storyline, is that if you beat a boss, you will probably get their enemy card, and the Captain Hook enemy card gives you the second chance ability. I'm not sure if I explained that in Sora's storyline or not, and I probably won't use it that often, but it can be used fairly effectively in some situations. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and grind the rest of this floor, guys. I will meet you in the Conqueror's Respite Room when I'm done. Alright guys, as you can see here, I've completely taken care of all the rooms on this floor, and normally what I would do here is get you ready for the cutscene that normally plays, but in Riku's story, you have to walk down the hall or run, and go up the stairs, and then you get the end of floor cutscenes. I have identified the scent. It is Riku. Riku, you say? Has he emerged from the realm of darkness? His existence, it was once doubled in the darkness. Fascinating. That's why you mistook him for the superior. The dark power given to Riku facilitated his escape from its realm. What I want to know is why he appeared here in Castle Oblivion. That's really quite simple. His existence resonates with that of another hero. 
Sora is in the castle? He arrived earlier. Marluxia is already using Namine's unique powers to meddle with Sora's heart. Without even bothering to consult us. It seems he desperately wants the Keyblade Master for himself. What a foolish plan indeed. Sora's is not such an interesting existence. The entity that holds true value is Riku, the hero of darkness. I've always really liked that cutscene because it explains a little bit about the realm of darkness, which sort of implies that a realm of light exists, which is mainly where most of the series takes place, but also how Riku was able to get out of the realm of darkness, which we saw him in, in the at the end of the first game, to Castle Oblivion. And I should probably point out, I don't think they explained this in this game, and actually I don't even remember what game they explained it in, but I'm pretty sure Castle Oblivion is the place between the Realm of Light and the Realm of Dark. And once we get into Birth by Sleep, Castle Oblivion will have a little bit more of a significance. But I think I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here, guys. Obviously, I always end the episode standing in front of the next door, but I have a feeling this is going to be a really short episode, so that's going to be kind of weird after the really long episodes we've had in this Let's Play so far. But I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts, Reaching the Memories, and I hope to see you guys back for the next episode.